Welcome to the DTC Podcast. To, uh, in a way, do your own thing if you choose to. Welcome to the DTC Podcast. I'm Daniel Fenley. This is Dr. Tom Brown. Today we're going to talk about why mechanical engineers should get a professional engineering license. Well, hello, Daniel. How are you doing today? Good to see you. Great. Good to see you as well. I'm going to jump right into our first question here. Thinking about the current economic conditions, the, the pace of innovation in our world and, and technology, layoffs, remote, remote work, the need for engineering solutions, how do mechanical engineering PEs fit into this equation? Well, it's going to be an exciting time. Um, there's going to be a lot of change. As they say, the, uh, the only thing constant in life is change, right? Uh, and uh, the ability to, um, to uh, adapt, to be flexible, uh, is going to be a very important part of that. And you're going to be limited in what you can do by not being a PE. Being a PE is going to open up all the options for you to not only work with other MEs, but maybe civils, electrical, uh, engineers from around the world uh, are going to get together to work on projects and have their own little company, maybe for six months, maybe a year, and that'd be it. Thinking about mechanical engineers, a lot of them don't think they need to get their PE. And I'm sure you hear this a lot. Some of them say it's because they're not, it's not required for their job. What would you say to them? What are the reasons why they should maybe reconsider that position? Yeah, that's uh, traditionally uh, mechanical engineers do not have to have their PE. When I worked uh, in industry many years ago, didn't have to have a PE. Uh, there are other disciplines that you're in the civil engineering world, and uh, there the you have to have a PE or you don't have a career, right? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot of reasons. One is uh, uh, the, the co most common thing. Well, you can s sign drawings, but but that's not really what it's about. The whole the whole thing is really about you being able to, uh, in a way, do your own thing if you choose to. In today's climate, we have this issue of um, uh, people being laid off and and, and uh, companies letting them go or only being hired as a contract person. And uh, if you want to go out and do something, the only way in every state in the union is to have your PE. If you get your PE and you don't intend to, to ever have, have a business, um, you make yourself a, a better candidate for promotions. Uh, certainly people with masters uh, are, have an advantage. I know with my masters when I went into work, I got jobs and whatever that someone without it might not have. But if you then add or have as a substitute the PE, you make yourself known. You, you've got this, um, this certification that you have gone through this gauntlet. And, and that, that just means a lot. It just does. It's surprising how it is. I mean, the, the day you get that, that, again, the thing that you can't sign, <laughs> some company must be making a bazillion dollars off this thing. <laughs> we all have them and we love them. And I said, it's this in this in drawer, okay? When I pull this drawer out, there's the little box, you know, this, this torn, you know, it's about to disintegrate. But in it is this little thing, and you can, you know, you can do it on, on there. It, it, do your thing. That's, I've done it about six times, I think, over the years. Yeah, I think that's great. One of the things that comes to my mind when I hear this question is, like most things in life, if you wait until you need it, it's too late. Oh. So you want to... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're talking, if you need your PE and you don't have the FE exam, FE part, or the PE, you're talking a year. And, you know, you've got a friend who says, you know, come, uh, come work for me. I've got this job and whatever. Oh, do you have your PE? It opens up a lot of opportunities. I think, you know, you can, can summarize it there that, it, you know, what you have may work and may work for the time being, but if something changes, you know, you want that to, to allow you to experience those other opportunities. Yeah, and, and one of the things to me, when, when I think about this question, there's a lot of pride that comes into this, okay, that you've passed this PE. Okay, I have a PhD, okay? But, and there's a lot, it was a lot of joy after spending the number, a few years doing that. But to get that envelope that said, I, I passed the exam and now I'm a PE, there's a lot of pride that's in that, okay? And you can't, you just can't express it sometimes. Okay? You, it is like what you did when you got your degree or some other kind of certification, but uh, the PE means a lot. And it means a lot to others that are uh, MEs because they think, you know, this is impossible to do, but you've now done it. So, you know. And, and one of the things that I've, I've 
found especially uh, some comfort in being a PE is some of the ethical questions you may get from a client. You know, can we cut this corner? You know, we need to make, we're behind schedule. Can you help us, you know? And it's a great opportunity to say that my license is on the line. And I love that that is something that you can use as an excuse and a reason to a client that I'm not going to cut corners. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to risk my license. I'm not going to risk my job uh, to make these kind of adjustments for you that are unethical. And I think it's a nice way to just say, here's a reason why I'm not going to do it. I'm not putting all this at risk. So that's something I have come to appreciate having that as we have this commitment to public safety. And if you're not fulfilling that commitment, and you're being asked explicitly to, to violate some of that, it's a good reason to say, I'm not going to do that. I, I'm not putting my license at risk. So um, you can use it, I think, a lot on the positive side that you described and also to kind of have that backstop on the, the negative side or to help kind of push back on a client if they're asking you to do something that you know shouldn't be done. I just got a letter, or maybe it was an email, from the North Carolina board, which I'm registered, mm -hmm about that they are now going to require one hour of the CPC mm -hmm. to be in ethics and professional practice, exactly what you just talked about. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, they. I get a newsletter from them and most of the newsletter is all about people who are practicing without a license, Correct. okay? I mean, it's page after page after page. Mm -hmm. Now, how they catch the people that don't have, I don't, I don't know, but, but you are supposed to only sign drawings or whatever that you've had personal um, attention to you don't just because you have this thing in your hand that can sign okay what drawings do I want to sign no you can't no you can't do that and I remember uh, one of the things that uh, people get forget is that when you become a PE you're a PE you're not a chemical PE you're not a civil PE you can take any exam or any of it do you want to you're only supposed to practice in the area in which you have confidence I have a civil engineering friend who does electrical engineering materials okay so it's a, ma a matter of that you know so you you've convinced me that it's, it's worthwhile to, to to work towards your PE to get that PE but thinking about the the variety of people we encounter as somebody that's out of school for one year or two years or 20 years or 30 years I think that we tend to see people as they're further on that spectrum of their time from being in school and taking exams in that process of learning and just a, approaching an exam and having that strategy it can be intimidating. So what, what do you tell that person that says, I just don't know that I can do this very long exam, a very difficult exam. How do I approach it? Yeah, we, get, we get a lot of people in that. It's not just people with one and two. We, we get a lot with 10, 15, 20. I think we had somebody uh, the other day, it seemed like they'd retired, but they wanted, uh, uh, they wanted to uh, get their PE and commit to that. Uh, and yes, that, that we're saying, God, I've been away from this a long time. I don't know that I even had thermo. If I have thermo, I can't even spell it kind of thing. <laughs> Just wait. I understand. Um, but we can help you. I mean, we, we have probably our average age probably is in the 10 to 15 year out of school range is our typical participant. Uh, it's not just one and two and three uh, year folks. Um, NCWS talks about the three E's of, it, uh, of licensure. Uh, education, which uh, we've talked about, that, that that's probably what you're going to have. Uh, exam, is take that, and then you need uh, experience. And so uh, those three uh, seem daunting, but if you take them a little bit at a time, then you'll make it. It's just, uh, uh, you, you have to, there's a part of a confidence here in it and a commitment. Now, you're going to have to commit time. There's, there's no way around this. You're not going to be able to do it with a couple of hours or watch a few videos or whatever on YouTube or whatever. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> it's not going to come back. Even if you just, <laughs> even if you just graduate, okay? I remember <laughs> getting my master's and then working for seven years and coming back, get my Ph.D., I had to go back and go, oh, right, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. Oh, right, okay. So you have to start all over. I mean, you can forget it in a weekend kind of a thing. But uh, we can. We at DTC, uh, we, have, we have broken this down into a 20-week course that's structured. We tell you what to do for five days of the week. The other two are up to you. But for five days of the week, we tell you things to do, and we – little bit at a time get you back in the groove on the material on the exam 
This is not about your job, though we do have people say, I got my PE, boy, I solved this. Our team solved a problem because of the problem you work there. It's, it's kind of, gives me pride, you know, I get goosebumps just saying that, you know, that this team, you know, solved something because of what they saw on one of my videos. But um, um, uh, it, it, you, it, you have to commit to the 20 weeks, five, uh, 20 weeks is five months. We tried shorter, but you can't get the material into that. We tried longer, and that was a mistake because it's just too big a window for people to make a commitment. But for you know, for five months, 20 weeks, make that commitment, um, do the 20 hours a week kind of a thing, and we will get you through if you'll if you'll do what we, t we ask you or suggest that you do. You know, kind of a thing. That's really what that's really what Dr. Tom is about. We'll help you. We're going to get you past that. And, and you know, we, we just all thrill when we get an email back. I passed. You have changed my life. You've changed my life. I now can, I'm free, okay, from this. That, that just, I mean, that's, that's what we live for. I mean, yeah, we're a business and all that, but, uh, but it's, it's helping people to achieve their extraordinary. And sometimes that may just be getting their PE. And that's fine with us. And I love that. I lo those are my favorite emails. Just like you said, I, lo I love that they're sharing in that celebration with them. And I tell them that since you pass it, you don't know what your score is. Tell me, send me an email saying you got 80 out of 80. <laughs> you made it perfect. <laughs> Nobody can argue with you. And there's no, that, that information is not published. And I want to see that. And I want you to be proud and just assume that you, you got them all right when you get that passing score. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Now, remember, you don't have to get them all right. You don't have correct. to make 100. Correct. Correct. Right? Correct. We, we talk about the, uh, mm -hmm. the infamous 70% of 80, yeah. which is 56. Mm -hmm. Well, the other day, I thought, I, thought uh, I was thinking about that, and I said, well, then you get 24 wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and hadn't thought about it that way, which means 12 in the first session and 12 in the second. So you don't have to know everything. Right. That's, uh, you can walk away from some, okay? That's uh, one of the things we'll, that uh, we'll talk about in another, another uh, session here about the uh, strategy. But, uh, uh, yeah, you, you, um, it's... Um, and, and the vast majority of people are within that passing range. And you may be a few questions short. You may be a few questions on the, the positive side. And that's where I think you really need a good process and a 20-week course really is going to set you up. Uh, for success on that exam and puts you hopefully above that line, above the 56, uh, so you so you pass and get your PE. Yeah, we we having taught all these course every course that's that, that's part of at least the the, the uh, MDM and the TFS course that we have. I've taught those and I know the problems that that you're likely to see, and those are going to be in the 56. Yeah, and you can learn anything, but you can't learn everything. And this is going to, yeah. Dr. Tom's going to focus you on what you need to learn to pass the exam. You can't learn everything, but you can learn anything. And this, I is, agree. this is part of it. Yeah. Great. Yes, thanks, thanks for this, Dr. Tom. You're welcome. You're welcome, Daniel. It's a pleasure. Always a pleasure talking, talking the PE licensure with you. Dr. Tom's Classroom, your best chance to pass the PE.